Welcome to Kingdom Reality, your gateway to deep insights into the truths and realities of God's kingdom. Dive deep into the teachings of esteemed teachers of God's Word as they illuminate the mysteries of Scripture, offering priceless wisdom and revelations. Our channel serves as a beacon of enlightenment, guiding seekers on a transformative journey towards understanding the essence of divine truth and purpose. Join us as we explore the depths of spiritual reality and embark on a quest for genuine understanding and spiritual growth, revealing kingdom realities. In the corridors of history, one woman's courage changed the fate of a nation. Who is Queen Esther? Apostle Joshua Selman unravels the story behind this iconic biblical figure. Explore the journey of a humble orphan who rose to royalty and saved her people. Discover the divine purpose and destiny that Esther embraced, inspiring generations. Step into the legacy of Queen Esther and uncover the power of purpose and bravery, revealing the strength and significance of Queen Esther's story. Look how dangerous this honor is. The king never, if, if, is very clear from scripture that Vashti was not a woman of honor because there's no record of her running to the king to say, Oh king, have mercy upon me. King to hell with you. What is there about your palace? It's all like, let me remind you that once upon a time, you were not in the palace. In the name of Jesus Christ, I forbid it for and enter the palace and have to come out because of this honor. My Bible says to me, the path of the just is as a shining light. The Bible says it shines ever brighter. I've seen this with men of God. You are here today in this height. Have you seen names and seen people that seem to capture your attention? Then a season comes. Just fades. Sometimes it could be a music artist. Everybody is placing a demand on your grace until you forgot that the favor and the honor of the people is a trust you should not trivialize. And suddenly, everything goes down. Whatever you can do in your life to make honor. I know people who would have been managing directors today without battles. Every qualification, prophecy had come. This honor shut that door and threw the padlock. Threw the key anywhere. Train your spirit man. When Jesus was born, he was taken to the temple to honor the people that spiritually contributed to his arrival. Please listen. Take him to the temple. Simeon the prophet lifts him, blesses him. Anna the prophetess blesses him. And then he starts to leave. Now watch this. Until Jesus came to the scene, the official voice of God within that territory was John the prophet. I hope you know that. Who we call the Baptist. Baptism was a strategy to identify the Christ. Look at the rigor he went through to be trained to be able to see Jesus. Now John sees Jesus coming. And then he says, Behold the Lamb that takes away the sins of the world. And John said, I know you are the Christ. And you know, Jesus, you know, their conversation. And he says that, um, I am not even worthy to untie the latchet of your shoe. Jesus would have said, I, I thought you don't know. Jesus, let me tell you this. Listen, listen. Please listen. Jesus, the Word, was under a closed heaven for 30 years till honor opens his heavens. Jesus, your Jesus, as the Son of God, his heavens were closed. Not even the Father opened it. He came to the existing authority within that land. And Jesus said, suffer it to be so. In other words, this is an ordinance that not even me can violate. Please listen. This is powerful. It's a law. It's not a suggestion. It's not an opinion. It's a law. I jump here by mistake. Gravity will not say, okay, I know you are preaching. You are just carried away. I'm falling straight up. Praise the Lord. And then, John dips Jesus in water. And the Father is watching. When Jesus comes out, then the Bible says, and the heavens. Over who?
said and have a crowd he would have tried it and be surprised he would have tried to call people he would have tried to collect a man's donkey and see what the Roman people would have done for him you lose someone's donkey and say the master has need of it who else is the master if not Caesar but when your heavens are open there are things that others can do and fail and you can do and pass with it please listen don't just be excited for nothing I want you to get this it's a principle we are going to pray shortly but you have to get this honor opens his heavens the father now says this is my beloved son what was he before that the father is saying this now haven't fulfilled this ordinance this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased and then he says here yeah. hear you businesswoman who has announced that Lagos should hear you just because you have a good guarantee you will be heard just because you have a voice that sings does not guarantee you will be heard please listen to me just because you have an anointing genuine anointing it doesn't mean you will be heard that verdict hear ye him that's what honor does hear ye her songs hear ye his sermons come to his church honor hear ye him Jesus climbs up the mountain 5,000 people climb with him because there is a verdict hear ye him for three days they are up that mountain he goes by the sea of Gennesaret and people Nobody can lift himself. It is not given to men. You do not have the ability to promote yourself. It is not within your jurisdiction. Your assignment is to align yourself to be discerned and promoted. Could this be why we are where we are? Could this be why prophecies continue to come week after week? Let me tell you, it is difficult to... His honor will change you like Samson. Even if the person is obviously wrong, the show of honor, we talk about the person. He said, Look, just forget about it. I know it's true, but how do I say it now? There was a foolish man in the Bible who would have been at the wrath of a king except that he had a wise wife called Abigail. The woman quickly stepped in to bridge the foolishness that the dishonor of that man caused. Could this be the reason why many families do not work? There is a lot of prayer and spirituality, but there are different versions of dishonor. Dishonor from the woman to her husband, dishonor to several things. I've shared this story and if you permit me to share it. A true story, I heard it somewhere many years ago. That there was a man of God and this man was having a serious crisis in his family. I think it had to do with maybe a financial crisis, things were not working. Yet he was a pastor in a church just like this. And people would always come to testify. Pastor prayed for me and doors opened. Now I have a job, now I'm abroad and all of that. And things were, I mean there was fire on the mountain in his own house. And then one time a service was running like this. And his wife just got up and walked out of the church. Imagine what happens if her mother just gets up and walks out of here. You wonder what happened now. And then the man was touched. He finished the service, did his counseling very quickly and reached for his house. And he went home, honey, what is wrong? She never uttered a word. Please pay attention. He sat down at the table waiting for his meal. What is wrong? If I offended you, I'm sorry. We can talk about it.
Now we have here this put there's a section for it. It's not that the holy of holies. That ray it doesn't come out carelessly. It came out that day. And then the plates. And you know the man was laughing as if we've been married for years. Let's not do this, children. Let me eat. She didn't say a word. Please listen. When she brought the last item that would be on the table, she now knelt down and looked at him, her husband, and said, Servant of God, my family is in trouble. Listen carefully. Because the anointing on that man continued to bless people who discerned that he was not just a man, that he was an anointed man. And the wife said, when they say, lift your hands, say, well, are you not my husband? What we quarreled this morning, I helped you with your bathing water. What is all this? Lift your hand again. And she was shocked that the church was rising, but their home was dying. And the woman like Esther said, I found the key. It is this honor that has been closing the door. Today, you are not my husband again. Today, you are a man of God. I am your member. My home must change. Hear me. Let me teach you this. There are many dimensions to every man you see. The dimension you honor is the one that brings its riches to you. Your brother is not only your brother. Your brother is also a prophet. He never prophesies to you because the only dimension you call is your brother. So you receive stories about how the family is doing back at home. That's a brother's reward. There are women that carry certain graces. Please listen to me. They never beg quarter to shame. Something must arise and bail them out. You will never see them. It's a grace. They may not be educated. But there's something about their bowing their knees. It's like God covenanted with himself. Whatever they did to God that made him to enter that covenant. And one day they will say, I will pray for you. I will pray for me. My pastor prayed. Nothing worked. Talk more of you. And you remain there. Let me tell you the truth. Human beings are mysteriously, mysteriously strange. Just all you see is not all there is. Praise the Lord. In everyone seated here, there are untapped spiritual dimensions that if honor is engaged on, our lives can change. There are many women who continue to pray for other people to have children, but their children have not seen a need to come. Mommy, I hope you are praying for us. Say, well, I will do my best. And five years become seven years. The day that daughter comes and says, Mommy, this is a seed I brought you. For what? Say, mm -hmm. I have watched everyone you prayed for come with twins, triplets. I'm not meeting my mother. I'm meeting a woman with the grace that can terminate barrenness. Let me tell you the truth. That day, that day, it would no longer be as usual. For many years, I would not preach in my own state. I would preach in neighboring states. I didn't know why that happened. My own family, my own blood mother, things were not going as well. And one time my mother was very, very sad. And she was fed up. Every time I went to greet them at home, I didn't feel like a man of God again. It was as if the anointing would hang at the gate. As soon as I go out, I said, okay, come back, let's get back to work. Not because they were bad people. But one day my blood mother, biological mother, she now looked at me and said, we're tired of this. There has to be a way. And my mother cried that day and said, but you are blessing others and lifting the lives of others. And that day for the first time, that grace and that anointing, I felt that grace with all my heart. And I laid my hands on my own blood mother. And I said, mommy, I stand in the name of Jesus and I shift you to a dimension untold. Today I speak to you in the name of the Lord. People who do not know me find our family house in Joss and knock the gate. Are you apostles' mothers? This is for you. Thank you for giving back to apostles. Please listen. 
if this teaching does not help you today I don't know where we are going to start from with you because this is a teaching that the results can be instant some of you your results can be after this service God is already showing you the person to truly go and honor to go and say look we are colleagues we graduated at the same time but you have never been without a job for three months when a company seems to throw you in three months another one has come what grace do you have he said, ah, bros, mm, leave bros, please. I'm tired of roaming around like Cain in Lagos, a place of opportunity. Don't you know that this city has its riches? But there are people whose hands have never touched it. They were born and bred here. People come upon your soil and place a demand to honor and walk away with blessings. Who is God speaking to this morning? There are many pastors. Let me tell you this. I've shared with you. Maybe I'll just say this and then we'll pray. I'm teaching honor. In 2004, Reinhard Bonke came to just for a crusade. I left Kaduna State and I went down because I desired a grace upon that man's life. I was already a man of God. I was already working in miracles. I was already ministering to people. How stupid would I be to imagine we are at the same level? You will never receive from a colleague. There is no transference from colleague to colleague. There has to be a spiritual potential difference. Someone has got to acknowledge and discern. The Elijah, Elijah was never supposed to be a prophet. He was a farmer. But he decided to walk with an angry man. If Elijah were your boss, you would know why the sons of the prophets were not happy people. That temperous man, you don't know what he will call today. Whether he will call fire or call whatever. And the sons of the prophet were obviously offended. But Elijah said, you can shout, oh, you don't know me, there's something I'm looking for. Listen, can you ignore the weakness in men to still get what they carry? Listen, let me teach you this. We're rounding up. I know why we never receive from men because they are ethnic. And unfortunately, you will want God to switch the anointing to something more desirable. And God in His economy will leave it there. Let me tell you the secret of receiving from men to transit to another dimension is hidden in the riddle of Samson. When Samson, please listen, when Samson tore a lion on his way to go and see a lady, are we together now? He returned after seven days and he found a mystery. He found that there were trees in that place, but the bees did not go to put honey in the tree. They came and entered inside the carcass and put honey there. And so when Samson came, he was looking for the honey and the bees directed him inside a smelly carcass. And he gave a riddle. He said, out of something strong has come something sweet. Why will bees not go to trees and enter a smelly carcass? This is the mystery of how God stores possibilities. The vessels may be smelly, but can you endure the smell to get the honey? That's the price. Whoever told you anointed people are perfect in themselves? Were you not pre-told that the treasure is in earthen vessels? Elijah is temperous, but ignore him and you will never carry the prophetic. Imagine a man following this harsh prophet. And he goes from Gilgal, Bethel, down to Jordan. And he says, so now talk to me, what are you looking for? Imagine that kind of thing, that you are following someone, he should know. I mean, you would have said, Abba, prof, don't you have brains? Where, where is your prophetic? No. When you are desperate for growth, anything is endurable. When you begin to complain about things, it's because you are not desperate enough for growth. Your boss may be an angry man, but one call from him can be used by God to change your life. Because you mismanaged his anger, he threw you out. And you acted like it didn't matter. See now, it's five years. Five years. Every 
everybody who can give you a job respects that same angry man and when he says they want to give you a job he says i told you leave that person angry it's amazing how god watches people and still leaves those things there they laughed at moses and says man you married a black utopian woman are you the only one god would talk to moses kept quiet but god said i won't keep quiet god came and said what did i hear you say against moses have i ever talked with you face to face do you think moses is just a man and the glory came and left his sister miriam you know miriam was a prophetess and she was wondering why god was not using her And leprosy just came upon her. This honor is not only bad, it has side effects. Side effects that can be demonstrated in your lifetime. People can know that you are carrying this as a token of dishonor. There are many ways to build your life. You can pay your way through in pain. Or you can honor your way through this strange lift called honor. I learned this. I will never dishonor any man. I will never dishonor any church. I will never dishonor any people. When we got to the airport, the precious, precious pastor, by the way, please let's, let's, um, I spotted, let's, let's honor her. Truly, truly, practice it now. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Please sit down. It was such a gracious reception and my heart was gladdened and I said, boy, look at this. There are people you invite, they are surprised that you are not blessed. They wonder where the anointing went. Your dishonor removed it from them and kept it at the door of the church. Ask Jesus. He enters his city and he says, ah, the carpenter's son here. No wood for us today. And Jesus says, let's go out of this place. There is, no, there is no point trying. They will not receive. Please hear me, young people. Your mother may be in the village. She never went to school. But do you know when she was small, her prophetess mother blessed her and said, whoever you open your mouth, even if it's in your room, I'm blessed. Your life will change. Please hear me hear me can I give you one more story and then we'll pray did you finish the Reinhard Bonke story but let me just switch and talk to you about one that relates with you you've heard it in my teachings we were on our way to preach sir, in Ekiti it would be my first time there and so we had to fly to um, Iloring the airport and then we'd go by road and so when we went they received us and we were on our way going and then I started watching the obituaries obituaries and I would see 120 something years 130 something years I said these people are joking call all these Guinness book of records to come to Nigeria they said the oldest person is 114 come to Nigeria where the mystery of longevity dwells one something and then I passed and I saw one 132 years just died in Nigeria within your region I noted it. I went to preach. When I was done preaching and we returned, I was passing. God is my witness. And then I saw one 145 years. And then I went back to the 132. He was like a senior apostle who just, who just died. And then I said, I told the driver, stop. There is a grace for long life here. Instead of taking the risk and a plane will crash me tomorrow. Now I'm not, I'm not being sarcastic. Every possibility is secure through understanding. Graces are transferable. Many of the graces you ask for left heaven change. You don't just know how to bring your portion to you. I would have said I'm a man of God. I've spoken long life over people. Uh -uh. I'm too young to take that risk. I plan to live here for a long time. There is, there, is, there is work to do for the kingdom. Please listen. And I don't speak Yoruba. 
and the man there now he, he, he doesn't seem to speak English but he looked like a Christian community small community I said no there has to be a way out oh Lord I stopped I packed this car to receive something solid eventually we found someone who could speak limited English and I said okay we are men of God we came to receive the grace for long life who is the oldest man in this place he must pray for us before we leave and then eventually they interpreted it as they told told us to go and meet one old man and we entered the room I was talking then you will interpret watch what happened please I would speak and then you will interpret Yoruba and we said we are here to receive the grace for long life I thought the man would say no we don't have that grace he laughed he said kneel down I cannot know this on my own unless you say go I'll never know this by myself Unless you take over Listen That man said ne He didn't ask Are you a man of God? Are you the one they call Apostle Joshua Selman? That's nonsense When it has to do with, re with, with reception You remove your crown Throw it far from you It's not only worship that demands removing your crown Receiving also He said kneel down I knelt down quietly and the man started praying in Yoruba quite honestly I was not interested in what he was saying all I know was that it's a law or not it's a law there is no gate it will not open I come from the north there are killings there I said I must transport this grace for a long life the moment she was praying I felt like a crown just didn't put on my head and when we were done praying then I appreciated him packaged the sheet and gave him and then I went out uh, we were to enter the car then I saw some women standing there and then I said let me go and thank them they were the first people we contacted and I went there and I said you know mama they were interpreting just to say thank you and they said you see this man who is 132 years this is his wife she was like 120 something standing no stick I said let's go back let's go back no we have to go back Behind every glory there is a story. Let's go back. Two have become one. If the man has died, he's still alive. I thought that she was the wife of his old age, like Keturah. But this is the one and only wife. The man died 132. And then when they told her she laughed, she tapped me, said, follow me. Then she opened a room. And I started seeing the pictures from those times where the deep um, camera inside, whatever, if you touch it, it will stay and remain there forever. I started seeing the pictures together, the wife of his youth. What did they know that the arrows that fly by day, that the noisome pestilence, what did they know? What did God do for them? So you can go to God in prayer and say, God, give me long life. And he said, I've given it. He's not lying. It is within your territory. Use honor like a magnet and draw it to you. Every possibility you pray for is already in Lagos here. It is the discernment. The discernment. Those people live as if they are not in Nigeria. Out of my, from my father's side, the only person I like is my father. Is that not a risk to not tap into this kind of grace? And then I told her, I said, Ma, we honor you for who we represent. Please forget the fact that we are men of God. I want you to give me the blessing of a mother and the blessing that was upon this man. And the woman said, kneel down and she removed her shoes. I don't know about you, but when a woman takes off her shoes to stand on bare ground, you better start rejoicing. She took off her shoes and for 15 minutes, she even started with a song. First, before she started blessing me. When she finished, ask my people, wherever we are traveling to, whether the plane is going round and round, I'm sleeping, no. Many scriptures, it's true that he keeps them in perfect peace. But that the same grace, listen, 
you know possibilities by the results they produce. If they are not captured in your life, the grace is not yet there. We are going to pray. We are going to do a reimpartation of grace. Because someone has, has, has been the answer to your prayer for a long time. Everything you are saying God should give you, God gave the person seeds. And regardless what is happening in Nigeria, that person's whether finance or whatever doesn't go down. There is a grace that is capable to honor. This is what took Esther. She honored Mordecai, honored her way to the palace. Please hear me. In this conference, the Lord is speaking to us by the Spirit. Honor is a weapon. It is not always the sword that wins. Sometimes you need to drop the sword and use the weapon. Women, God is speaking to you. It is not always the sword. Deborah was a warrior, but she never sat on the throne. Ask Esther how to win a seat on the throne. Ask Esther how to replace Vashti. When you do what Vashti did, you will follow her ways. Vashti said, no, I'm too proud to honor you. She forgot that she was queen only because a king married her. It's why we stand here and we acknowledge him. Regardless of what people say, I will never make the mistake of Vashti. Because every man is a woman in the spirit. And if you ignore your husband and carve out a niche for yourself, then you are out of that palace. When it was time, I will be teaching you. Oh, please don't miss tomorrow. Whatever sacrifice you will make. We will, we will open this book of Esther. And God will show you something there. Esther comes to the king. Let me give you a preview. And says, Esther, what ailed thee? Even if it's to half of my kingdom, I will give you. Esther would have said, that's it. Give me the kingdom, the part where the Jews are, where they want to kill them. Just give it to me quickly. That would have been a wise strategy. But let me show you what honor does. He says, O oh king, all I want to do is to show you how great you are. I have put a banquet, a woman under fire. There is a threat happening. And the king says, what is wrong? She says, nothing. I only came to honor you. And I want her man to be there. So honor can kill. That's how she killed a man. You honor an enemy to death. Did you ever learn that honor is a weapon of mass destruction? I want her man to participate in that honor. Her man comes foolishly. Goes to tell his household. You don't know what is going on. I'm not only exalted, I'm, I was specially chosen to eat with the king. And then she flaunts the king's glory. And then the king said, no, there is a catch to this. My wife, or you are now, be serious. What do you want? She says, let it please the king that I repeat this again. King, can I do this again? And the king said, Vashti, why didn't you do this? You would have remained in the palace. This is all I wanted. Oh, foolish Vashti. It's not only Galatians that were foolish. The foolishness started from Vashti. And I hope it ended with the Galatians. May it never, never be all oh, foolish me. Whoever told you honor was for weak people. Women, whoever told you arguing and shouting with the man and say you don't know you, you go and find out silly and tissiness. You just innocently married me. You, you will soon know that just because many times the sword does not win. The sword may injure, but it may not bring victory. There are times you don't need injury, you need victory. If a war is not needed, keep your sword. Not every victory needs war. If you don't have to fight, let honor lift you above the challenges. Is God giving us wisdom? And she takes the king. 
and blesses him again then there was a particular feast she now organized it was called the feast of wine that was when she made her request not when there was food she said king drink the wine i serve this wine something happens when you are full of wine i will show you tomorrow are we together hi look let me tell you yours is to play your own part and watch the power of god's laws they will shift things shift systems it will be like you are holding a charm god what are you doing some of you you need to practice this that tomorrow you buy wine and a gift pack and take it to the department where someone vowed that if by june you don't leave this job except i didn't come here before you and you give me the gift and say i'm just here to honor you and ignorant people will say oh foolish you that's why they keep talking honor is a sword it can kill you can honor people down while you rise <laughs> her man was honored to the gallows that he built she never fought her man once she said let her man also be in the feast we're praying her man sat down foolishly and while he was eating he did not know death had come what is now your request and she said my life and that of my people are being threatened he said by proof he says the enemy is this wicked her man the king lives for a while and goes to his garden that's what every good man should do when you're under pressure don't talk be silent go out of that place and be risen with wisdom then return and look at this he now fell on the bed where esther was to beg her you see but when god wants to make nonsense out of your enemies their good can be evil spoken of the king just entered when she was begging and said it's not enough that you want to kill my people you now want to rape my wife and then as soon as he said that one of the king's men said sir for your information there is a gallow that was built who asked him maybe they would have just killed him but if and the king said go and hang him we are going to pray listen to me every consistent result has come from the sacrifice that a man has paid with God in the secret with the spirit of understanding woe betides a man who ignores greatness when you see it and without all contradiction the less is blessed the less is not the weak one the less is the one in need praise God I've had the opportunity many times to be at the redemption camp and to pass there I say Lord I know that I'm a man God that you have helped but what grace did you put upon our father are these dimensions not transferable a man that God gives a kilometer and kilometers for an estate that's more than real estate there is a grace for territory you can be struggling to get a space Oh God, two bedroom flat and you will help me. Whereas you are under a grace that has territory. Listen. Women, you can stand for your husbands this morning. Say the embarrassment that comes from rent has to end in this conference. I'm a product of many anointings. I have trained myself to not despise graces when I see it. I'm not too big to receive. Mm -hmm. 
baptized and you must leave there are artists here sitting now there are men and women that God has raised from this ministry please listen to me we are going to pray that continue to be honored by God around the nations you have never taken the time you have greeted them how far now man of God you are doing well you are home ah, you mean you are this um, I, you, so you are the one you will never rise that way this is not human worship I teach you the wisdom of the ancients that a day can come you can say sir I have tried to produce an album for 10 years it makes people want to help you think people just come to help you in this wicked world who has your time there is a grace that draws people was it not in your Bible that Gentiles will come not that you will look for them to your light and their kings to the brightness of your rising it says that your gates shall be open they will be open day and night and not be shut to receive the forces of the Gentiles there are people in this church who have been marvelously helped like Uzziah by God by God's grace finance is not a concern but you stand today wondering how will tomorrow be financially it is good that you have learned all the business principles it is good that you have learned all the investment principles but do you have the discernment to say Lord there is a grace there are people way before they knew what they were doing they were already prospering in that area because they were under a grace something we have ignored has pegged us in this position and we are going to pray and cry for the next two three minutes everybody you are going to be alone with God and your destiny for your family for your children if you have nothing to pray for for yourself you have to pray for someone you love father I love you the palace was full of every other thing but without dishonor it was about to divide I pray in tongues I'm a man of God I have revelation but every door is shut towards me now I see that there are doors only honor can open ah. there are doors mothers is God speaking to us You are crying that God will touch your children. Look what he has done to children in this church. There are children who have, written, who have risen with flawless track records. Never done anything twice in their life. crown before pray the highest royalty I am undone before your glorious majesty I cast my crown before the highest royalty Undone before your glorious majesty, you're the King of kings and Lord of lords, you are the King of kings, you're the King of kings and Lord of lords. 
your glorious majesty. Oh, 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 Doing a work in our lives. On the mystery behind the strange rising of people. Alabarus kata brandi keti baladama. I understand the mystery behind the closed doors in my life now. That in spite the opportunities that once opened, listen, if a door ever opened and is now closed, this honor closed it. And no matter who you are, there are many music artists in this nation. Doors opened and this honor shut them out of it. There are many preachers that doors opened and dishonor shut them out of it. Many business people, you were granted access to stairs and circles. Dishonor shut you out. Cry to the God of heaven, the restorer of times and seasons. It says the sons of Issachar who had an understanding of the time, they knew what Israel ought to do. Man of God, are you praying? Like the hair of Samson, Lord, I cry for a restoration. Let the doors be opened once again. Let the doors to my music ministry be opened once again. Let the doors to my ministry be opened once again. Let the doors to the storehouse of my destiny be opened once again. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You are going to ask the Lord for grace to discern who is deserving of honor. They may not come in forms that you will see and appreciate. We live in a society where we are obsessed with Scanning things from the vistas of society, the sociology within us, the greatest things in your life will not come in forms that you will appreciate. You will need discernment. Lord, grant me discernment to see the graces, to see the individuals and the sacrifices. They are men, but they are lift. They can lift you. They are men, but they are spiritual systems that can carry you to untold dimensions. They don't have to be men and women of God in ministry. They have to be men and women who are carrying something divine and something powerful. Few minutes we are praying. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Honor, heartfelt, sincere, truthful, unbiased, genuine from your heart. Hallelujah. Listen, please listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. When you honor people, just because you suspect there is something in them you can have is hypocrisy. Honor is a culture that must be truthful. I know you have the fortitude for honor when I see what you do with people who have nothing to give you. 
Honor is a culture that is too contagious to exempt anybody. If that spirit is upon you, you will honor the mighty and the low at the same. You don't treat everybody like a dog and suddenly turn to someone and say, Wow, uh, Sean, sir. No, you are a hypocrite now. Honor is not political. It follows the purity of your desire. Must be fettered by the sincerity of your desire. It is the reason why you can kneel down and have hands prayed for you and never receive anything. You will fall and stand up and go back. But someone can be in the secret place and your pastor right in your room you can say, Lord, I discern that this is a man of God. I don't know what you put upon this man, but Lord, I receive. I've opened him up to a door. Hallelujah. Can I say a word of prayer? Father, I stand here as one who has been granted grace and mercy of the Lord. I stand here only as one privilege of your grace. May we never be ashamed to let men see you. Let the glamour of palace never make us to make the mistake of fasting I stretch my hands upon you right now and I pray for you in the name that is above all names I'm speaking by the spirit that every dimension you lost through dishonor every level I stand by the God of Jeshua, the one who rides upon the wings of the wind, and I shift you back to that level. I shift you right now, step back into that dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, I speak to every door that has been closed over by your destiny through dishonor by the message of the God of David let that door be opened again in the name of Jesus God is the God of the second chance he says and Adam knew his wife again and to bear a son and he called him Seth I'm praying for someone who has faith to believe I stand here and I shift you to a new level in your life in the name of Jesus Christ I shift you to a new dimension spiritually thank you Jesus please let me encourage you I know that a number of us here do not fellowship with this parish but please forgive my bias let me plead with you please do not miss the next session I want to show you a very deep mystery in the book of Esther and then I trust God together with all who will be ministering to you that God will put something upon your life that when you walk out of this conference it will be worth any sacrifice Father, we give you praise in the name of Jesus. Have you been touched by the message you just heard and you want to give your life to Jesus or you want to rededicate your life to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Then say this short prayer. Lord, I admit I am a sinner. I need and want your forgiveness. I accept your death as the penalty for my sin and recognize that your mercy and grace is a gift you offer to me because of your great love, not based on anything I have done. Cleanse me and make me your child. Be faithy receive you into my heart as the Son of God and as Savior and Lord of my life. From now on, help me live for you, with you in control. In your precious name, amen.
Congratulations to you! If you have just said that prayer, you are now a child of God. Look around you for a Bible-believing church, and also ask Jesus to direct you to the church where you can continue to serve Him. Consider subscribing to this channel too, so that you'll keep learning the realities of God's kingdom. God bless you!